Need some cash? Well, ATMs are just about everywhere these days, but if you're not careful, you could end up paying a very big price. It's a luxury many of us take for granted. Access to our money anytime, almost anywhere. ATMs, they used to be found only in bank lobbies. Now they're everywhere, from fast food chains to convenience stores. But just when you think an ATM is a safe place to get your money, you could be taken for a ride. The trouble is, how do you know what's a real ATM and what's just some idiot that just put one out on a corner somewhere that can scam you? Cybersecurity expert Jim Stickley decided to see how easy it would be to put a fake ATM on a busy street, stealing precious card numbers and pins. He bought kiosks online, installed a fake card reader, a touchscreen, and voila. There's nothing about them that would question that they're not an ATM machine. A fake ATM with some real consequences. They're going to put their pin in. Instead of giving them money, I'm just going to give them a message telling them there was an error processing their card. Next stop, 6th Street, Austin, Texas, a city known for its nightlife with lots of foot traffic and even more ATMs. With the permission of popular nightclub Pure, Jim set up two ATMs outside in broad daylight. No questions asked. I mean, as you can see, we got the ATM set up. They look really good on the street. The no fee thing's the big draw. Um, I mean, everybody that's walked by has made comments. With four hidden cameras in place, Quick Stop ATM was officially open for business. It looks like any regular ATM on the street. I would trust that ATM. We just got another one right now. She's now entering in her PIN, and as soon as she's done entering that PIN, we'll have recorded her card information and her PIN information. Equipped with their information, Jim has the keys to their account. Within half an hour of them using those cards, we can now go out, make our own card, which is very easy to do, and then do a withdrawal of up to whatever they have in their account. Now she's entering her PIN number in, and at this point, she's already been scammed. In reality, Jim only recorded the last four digits of their card number, along with the total number of digits in their password. We have another guy right now that's attempting to use the ATM machine, and he's just been denied. I never would have thought. Total shocker. In all, the machines were used 42 times by 27 different people. This in the course of just five hours. Austin turned out to be a great place. Um, you have a lot of people. They're out having a good time. The last thing on their mind is identity theft. Jim Stickley is with Trace Security. Jim, nice to see you. With all the money you scammed, you should have bought a coat. It's freezing out uh, it here. It is very cold. Is this something we really need to be worried about? I mean, we went out of our way, and you did, to create this scenario. But in a normal day, are we going to run into these things? Absolutely. These are happening all over the United States right now. And are they tend, do they tend to put these things in busy places like we did in Austin, Texas? It, it makes sense, too. They'll put it where it's outside of a popular nightclub, a restaurant, somewhere where they're going to get a lot of foot traffic. So, so equipped with the information, information you got out of this fake reader right here, what exactly could you do to the 27 people who used your ATM? Well, we could have made a card and had that card have their exact information on it, gone to a real ATM machine and withdrawn cash out of their account. And, and then there's probably a maximum amount that a thief could steal every day, and over time the banks might reimburse the you, customer? You would hope, yeah. But the trouble is that how long will it take for them to process that, get that money back into your account? All right, so you have some tips, and these are really important. First one is avoid using freestanding ATMs. Just describe exactly what you mean. Oh, this right here, just standing on a sidewalk, it's dangerous. You have no idea when this got put there and when they're going to take it away. You want it mounted to the side of a building. You want it inside of a reputable establishment. So does like it, that. I mean, for example, you say inside an establishment. I've been to a lot of little mom and pop stores, kind of convenience type stores that aren't parts of national chains. Should I trust those machines? For the most part, you should, yeah. Um, they're decent people. They're out to make a living, and they've decided to put it in there. It and, should be safe. And for people who get suspicious about a machine, there's probably things they can do. They can make phone calls, but the whole reason we use these is for speed and convenience, so you don't want to stop and have to disrupt your day. Absolutely. Nobody's going to stop. Your next tip is if it doesn't dispense cash, be suspicious. Why? Absolutely. Most of the time, if you walk up to a machine and it's out of money, it already says out of service when you first try to use it, before you put your card in or anything. So if it waits till after you put your card in and then you've typed your PIN and then it says, oh, yeah, never mind, it doesn't work, that's a, that's a troubling sign. Well, let's just go over that one more time because I think that's the most important thing in the segment. A reputable machine will tell you it can't dispense cash 
before you put in any of your personal information. Absolutely. And so if you get a sign after you've typed in your PIN that says, we cannot give you cash, what do you do? Walk away? Do you, do you stand and wait for a police? I mean, how do you then remedy the situation? Uh, I would contact my bank and find out, make sure that the process even attempted to happen. If they have no record of it even happening, be very concerned. Either put a watch on that or cancel that card and get a new and one. And your third tip is, if it's too good to be true, it probably is no fees. Yeah, um, most of these independent ATMs are out there to make money. If they're having a no fee on them, um, that's another layer. I mean, basically, as we said, you know, you've got it, first of all, freestanding. Then you've got this thing that's um, giving you this error message. Right. Then no fees. It's frightening. Uh, Jim Stickley, go get warm. You're freezing. I can tell.